This is fine Australian merino wool. It may seem like greasy, dirty, crinkly stuff, but it has some remarkable properties. It can produce some of the finest and most sought after fabrics in the world. It's what happens between the wool coming off the sheep's back and getting onto yours that makes it so attractive. What happens, of course, is that a lot of science and technology is applied to the raw wool. And there's nothing new in this. For thousands of years, people have been developing techniques for turning the hair of animals into textiles. The first European settlers in Australia were quick to see the potential for wool growing. And before long, the country was said to ride on the sheep's back. Developments such as the invention of mechanical shears in the 1880s helped expand the industry to the point where Australia became the world's major wool producer. Wool is still one of our major industries, with exports worth almost $2,000 million a year. For the clothing industry, wool has an appeal which synthetic fibres have not been able to match. That appeal is largely due to the natural qualities of wool, qualities that have been enhanced by extensive scientific research. At CSIRO's Division of Textile Industry in Geelong, researchers have been finding ways to improve virtually every stage of wool textile production. The first step is to wash out the dirt and grease. It's a process called scouring, and it produces large amounts of effluent, which can be difficult and costly to dispose of safely. This is a pilot scale plant developed by CSIRO, which offers a new approach to the problem. It's called low flow, and produces only a quarter of the usual amount of liquid waste. Most of the dirt and grease is removed from the wool in the first washing stage. The dirty water is then piped into two centrifuges. One extracts the dirt from the water, and the other the grease. The water is then returned to the system to continue washing. Scientists have found that the system not only reduces the amount of effluent, but increases the amount of grease extracted. The grease, what's more, is a valuable byproduct that is used for the manufacture of lanolin and cosmetics. The scoured wool is then dried in readiness for the next stage, which is called carding. Carding breaks open the entangled wool and removes vegetable matter and burrs. Any remaining burrs, as well as short fibres, are removed by a combing machine. The wool fibres are now aligned, ready for spinning. Spinning accounts for about 50% of the costs in yarn production. Worsted yarns, used for producing suit and skirt fabrics, are made from long fibres which are spun into a fine yarn. Single yarns are not strong enough to withstand the stresses of weaving, so two are wrapped around each other in a process called twisting. Researchers at Geelong have come up with a simple way of combining spinning and twisting into a single process, with a system they call spun. It represents savings of up to 40% over conventional systems. Yet spun is incredibly simple and can be readily adapted to existing machines. Spacing devices are fitted to a machine in such a way that two strands of wool are brought together with twist in each yarn, as well as folding of the two yarns about each other. A small plastic breakout device is the second essential element. If one strand breaks, it's important the other doesn't keep spinning by itself. So the device flips over, 
prevents the twist being inserted and the yarn breaks. The operator can then rejoin the ends and start again. Since it was introduced in 1981, Cyrospun has been fitted to over 60,000 spindles throughout the world. The savings of the Cyrospun process have made it economical for many manufacturers to produce fabrics like these. Unlike worsteds, woolen yarns are designed to remain fluffy. Dyeing these yarns can take up to two hours of boiling in large vats. But this radical prototype machine can achieve a similar result in less than 10 minutes. It continuously dyes a single thread of yarn at between 300 and 600 meters per minute. The most difficult stage in the system is application of the dye, a stage which has foiled previous attempts by German and French companies to develop continuous dyeing machines. The next stage is to fix the dye, which is done in this J-shaped tube where the yarn is steamed for about eight minutes. Inside the tube, it looks like a nasty tangle of worms, but miraculously, the dyed yarn can be drawn out and wound without trouble, ready for knitting. Knitted garments are very versatile, but have always had a major drawback, shrinkage. Just why wool tends to shrink deserves a closer look. Under a scanning electron microscope, a single wool fiber can be magnified thousands of times. Scales on the surface of each fiber interlock when a woolen garment is washed, preventing the fibers returning to their original positions, hence shrinkage. This superwash jumper has been treated by the CSIRO chlorine Percocet process which coats the fibers with resin so they won't catch on each other. Another process for preventing shrinkage uses chemical bonds to tie fibers together. To test the effectiveness of shrink-proofing experiments, researchers subject wool fibers to up to 20 hours continuous washing in these rotating cubes. If they can survive this, they can survive anything, even printing. Printing patterns onto wool fabrics has always been difficult and expensive. But this CSIRO developed process called Keratrans could change all that. Transfer papers printed with specially invented dyes are placed in contact with the wool fabrics. The wool has been pre-treated to make it more receptive to the dye. It's by far the simplest and cheapest printing system developed for wool and it's the first that would allow photographic images to be printed onto wool fabrics. At the Division of Textile Physics in Sydney, a very different but similarly economical system has been developed for printing wool fabrics. It uses the technique of jet printing, in which fine jets of dye are literally sprayed onto the fabric. A computer is used to control both the pattern design and the printing process, resulting in a system which is both quicker and more efficient than the usual silk screen methods. It's a long way from the good old merino to the computer controlled multi-jet printer. But it's appropriate that Australian ingenuity in the 1980s is helping keep one of our oldest industries alive and well in the international marketplace.